Hello and welcome. In this presentation, I'm going to go through the process of taking data from a Microsoft, or sorry, from a an Access Accounts Dimensions database into Microsoft Excel pivot table. So basically what we're trying to do is take this bucket of data, as I'm describing it here, uh, which is a, an Access Accounts Dimensions database, and we want to pull the information out into Microsoft Excel and produce some useful reports, maybe even some dashboards um, with the information we've got from, from Access. We'll provide a real-time link between Excel and the Dimensions database so that it will refresh itself automatically upon opening. That's the, that's the objective. Um, so why would we do this? Well, um, it's quick, it's cheap. There's no apps or subscriptions or even licenses involved. The end user doesn't have to worry about passwords or logins if we choose to set it up that way. And it's quite user friendly for the end user. Um, if you follow the video, you may not need the IT department. If you follow it very closely, you may not even need me. Now, what you will need, however, is a dimensions database any version of Microsoft Excel, you may need SQL Server Management Studio, particularly if you're if you're not talking to the IT team. Um, I would recommend though, if there's an IT department or an IT person in your company, that you collaborate with them on this. They may have a lot of this background knowledge and information already. Um, so it may be just that you need to contact me to get the, the script in order to be able to prepare the view. And with your IT person, you may be able to actually create the view very quickly and then follow the steps in the video to uh, create the um, the report in Excel. So I've said the good, the bad potentially on something like this is that a little bit of background knowledge of your dimensions database is required. You may consider it a little bit technical, so apologies if, if you find it that way. And a, a word of warning, uh, when you produce a report like this for the first time, it may actually end up opening the door for requests for further reports. And with a report like this, if you give people the capacity to analyze or to drill down on their data, it may end up asking or it may end up creating more questions. But I guess more questions, more insight, more knowledge, and perhaps better decision making ultimately. OK, so let's just get stuck into it then. So if we go to um, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, I've already prepared a script for you. So if you want to get your hands on this, just email me. I'll give you a copy of it. And if we take that script, paste it into Management Studio like this, and ensure we're connected to the appropriate uh, Dimensions database and execute, we will get something back like this. So this is basically a table of data which has been produced based on the criteria and the script that I put together back here. And what it's looking at are all sales, purchase, nominal transactions on that database for the past three years. So eagle-eyed among you may have seen that I had a criteria, a search criteria here, which filters to say only look for transactions where the items were in last year, current year, or next year. Now we could take this out and we could grab all transactions from all years on the database. This is a 20 year old database, though it's been running since the late 90s. So that's going to be a lot more transactions as it is with just those three years, we've pulled out over 400,000 rows of data. So having got the script, I'm going to convert that into a, um, a view. So I simply take the line, create the view here. And we are going to run this and hit execute. And that comes back and tells me that it's created successfully. So now that we have the view, we're going to go into Microsoft Excel and we're going to try connecting Excel to our dimensions database. So I just go to the data ribbon, get data from a database. In this case, it's the SQL Server database. And the first question that the SQL Server, or sorry, that the Excel connection is going to ask you is, uh, what is the name of the server? And if you don't already know, just going to the log on screen and dimensions should tell you. Just, just you might need to click on more and bring up um, the list of databases or whatever. But a window like this should tell you that in our case, the database, sorry, the server is called server. There's an instance of SQL Server running called SQL Standard 2005, and our database is Training 2018. So let's try that then. So we go Server, SQL Standard 2005. And the database, you can see it says optional here, but for our case, we're just going to put it in as, as the database name. OK, so that should be it. We click OK to that. And let's see if, if I got all my spellings correct. So 
So at this stage, it's connected successfully to the um, SQL Server database, and it's um, already connecting into 2018. There's tra training 2018. You'll see a whole list, a long, long list of um, tables within that uh, database. Uh, in this instance, or this version of Excel, uh, we get the option, we get a little filter option here. So we just put in the name of my, the first few characters of the, my uh, view. So I've created a view here called GRCT All Transactions. You'll see there's still lots of views or other views in there. I can do a quick preview on that. Don't really want to at this stage. Just go to load in load this to a pivot table. So we just go and load the report or load the data into a pivot table report. We'll click OK to that. So then after several seconds, we should end up having all of the rows of our data uh, returned to Microsoft Excel. Now, we don't actually see anything at this stage. We just have uh, the data potentially available to us. What we do have is this um, pivot table interface available here. And over on the left or the right side, we have um, the list of fields within the pivot table or the view that we've created. They're listed alphabetically right now. So the first thing I would normally do is just come in here on the left-hand side, right-click, go to pivot table options and just go to the display and change the fields list to sort by the data source order. And that just changes things over here then so that they're sorted in the original sequence in which we created them on the view. That gets us to a point where we actually now have our source data available in Excel and we can begin to write a report. So if we just start by looking at this report based on the customers and if I just isolate for the customer and supplier name, it brings out the name and um, code for each customer. And if we look at the values, then we can just pull in the uh, value, which is EUR net in this instance. So then I've sorted the value um, from smallest to uh, largest, and I get lots of negative values coming in here. And the reason for that is the type of data that I'm actually looking at. You see in this instance, I'm bringing in payments or receipts on customers, uh, which are shown as negatives, as well as the um, the actual invoices and credit notes. So there are a few things I can do here. I'm just going to introduce uh, slicers for a moment. So there's a couple of slicers I want to introduce. I'll put in type, year, and period. And when I do that now, I can see that I have the three years. If I isolate this for just the current year, the numbers will all change. And if I further isolate this to say I only want to look at invoices and credit notes, we obviously get further changes. And if I also put it in, because I'm looking at both sales and purchases here at the moment, so I'll come back into the slicers and I'll also pull in the ledger. So then rather than looking at the sale or the purchase transactions, I just isolate for the sales transactions. And now we have some sales transactions, current year, all periods for invoices and credit notes. Um, the values, obviously some of the numbers are uh, showing up uh, funny. Um, and if we just change the number format and put it in as a number with a thousand separator, I think we can eliminate the uh, cents for the moment as well. We end up having data that makes a bit more sense to us. And again, if we just sort this by uh, smallest to largest, so we get a large negative value there for, for Kathleen. And if we drill in on that, we'll see that there was a credit note uh, posted to the account. And um, we uh, are happy enough with that. That's fine. If we isolate this for a given period, then we can we can look at the, the, the sales transactions in any one period or range of periods. So um, having done that, then we'll just look at some other options that we have and try to build a decent report. OK, so I've just uh, made some few changes to the report there. I've brought in some additional some different slicers that I've made available on the view. So the year is the calendar year and month, calendar month. Uh, and that's taken from the date of the transactions being posted. I've also got the week number in here, just as an example. So we can actually just drop that in. And we're basically now getting an analysis of uh, 2018, month of January, week number one, two, three by sales rep or account manager, depending on how you want to define each of that. And I'm giving you analysis, uh, as you can see there, by day. So basically, it's just looking at the uh, the sales by rep by day. 
um, for each week of the of the year. And if we get down as far as September, then we can see we're into week 36 through 39. And again, Monday through Friday, see how things are going for each of those. We could isolate for any one rep then as well if we wanted to on that. Uh, we can uh, come in here and say we want to isolate for a particular salesperson and that just um, so we just actually focus on Claire for a second, see how she is doing each week, for example. We put in additional slicers if we want, or we can put in filters. So that's just a very brief um, synopsis. The prim primary objective here was to get the data from um, dimensions into Excel. If we go about saving this down now, we can just go to the properties and we can have it so that we can refresh this data as soon as we open the Excel file. We could take it a step further by going into the uh, the definition and actually telling the system that we want to do things like save the password and that would have the effect then that whenever this file is open it'll automatically go off and refresh itself with the latest data from dimensions so it's it's bang up to the second we can also look at uh, using the analyze tool to perhaps put in some pivot charts for example so if we wanted to do that uh, it will allow us to actually put in our charts just so we have columns or, or lines or whatever so we just go with the simple chart there we can actually then see how uh, how that information looks for us and see how everyone is doing uh, we're just isolating there for Claire at the moment by week um, got to be careful in what level of data you're looking at and just how much information you want to see as well so if we just actually take out the week for a moment we just have a uh, Claire's analysis Monday through Friday so we don't need that level and then if we want to get back in all of the reps here we get to see how everyone is doing uh, for the month of September. And again, maybe no harm if we just put the day back in there for a second, just to see how how the week pans out and we get to actually see, you know, where the trends are and uh, who's doing what level of business on each of the days. So I hope that's been of some help. It's, it's very basic, but um, it should give you at least the uh, insight as to how quickly you can go about connecting to your Dimensions database and begin pulling information out into Excel and a little bit of crash course then in just how to use the pivot tables function in Excel as well. If you have any information, or sorry, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Um, if you want the view, email me and I'll send it back to you. Um, and uh, if you liked this one, please uh, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment if, if you if you if you'd like more videos of this type um, and uh, i'm always open to suggestions for future videos thanks